In this lecture and the ones that follow, we're going to have a look at the Unity Entity Component System. Now, this is getting towards the ultimate in flyweight systems. Not only is it going to take the data away from your game object, but it also takes components away and treats them as the one thing, hence the name. Now, unfortunately, we don't have a lot of time to go through and build a whole beautiful system like you just saw with all of the swarming fish. Uh, it's very intricate and you can download it from Unity's GitHub if you want to have a look through it. But we really want to concentrate on the flyweight part of that and how it lifts the load off of the memory that you're using up, which means that you can actually fill up the memory with more things. Okay, so you're going to need a Unity project. What we're going to do first of all is to create a scene like we did at the beginning of this section, which doesn't use any optimization. So I've created this empty 3D scene. It's called um, Pearl and Cube, so I actually saved it. And I've brought in a Warthog folder you can see there. Now that's attached to this lecture as a resource. So just grab the package and drag and drop it into your assets folder and it will bring in here. Now what you're going to get is this uh, little pink car, which kind of reminded me of the Warthog from Halo, which is why I've named it Warthog. And we'll use that to drive around on the surface of the um, cube thing that we're about to build. Okay, so forget about that folder for a moment. First things first, we're going to go File and Build Settings. And when that window comes up, click on your Player Settings. And then in your Player Settings, we want to scroll down until you find the API compatibility level. For these new systems, you need to have .NET 4.x. So just click on that and swap your project over. If you've done this before, Unity used to require a restart. It doesn't need that anymore. Okay, so that's the only thing there. Shut that up and get rid of that. Now the next thing we need is the package. So go into Window at the top in the menu, Package Manager. Once that opens, we want to go to Advanced in the top menu and you want to see the preview packages because at this time, these ones are in development. Uh, so they're not kind of set in stone. We're looking for two particular packages. First of all, we want the Entities package, which is just down here. Okay, so grab hold of that and click on Install. And the other one we need is this hybrid renderer, which is just a little bit below. And what it does is it actually allows you to see things on the screen. Now, as I discovered while I was putting this together, you can just have the entities package installed and everything will still run perfectly, but you won't be able to see anything. Um, so that means you need to put in that hybrid. Where is it gone? Hybrid renderer. Okay, so select that and install that as well. Once that's all finished installing, you can shut down the packages window. All right, so let's start by spawning a whole bunch of cubes. In the hierarchy, right click, and we're going to create an empty, and we'll call that our spawner. So spawner. Then we want to create some script for it. So in the assets, create C sharp script, and we will call this spawn cubes. Okay, let's open that up. Right, first of all, we'll get rid of the update because we don't need that. And at the top, we're going to accept in a cube as a prefab. So let's go public game object cube, then we're going to have it set to so many rows by so many columns. So let's do two ints for rows and public int for coals. Okay, so let's say the world that we're creating of cubes is like 10 by 10, then we're going to have 100 cubes after we've created them all. Right, so inside of start, we will do a nested loop to loop around the rows and the columns. So for int 
x equals 0, x is less than rows, and then x plus plus. Same thing we want for the z direction, so int z equals 0, z is less than coles, and z plus plus doesn't really matter which way you think the columns are and which way you think the rows are. Let me just finish off these four statements. Now inside the middle one we're going to create an instance of the cube. So game object instance equals instantiate the cube and that will be set to a position based on its x and y. So vector 3, pause, equals new vector 3, and we will put it at its x position. For the y, we could put it at 0, so we get just a great big flat terrain of cubes. But let's just do something a little bit more different. So we'll do a mathf dot Perl and noise and just lift it up a little bit. So Perl and noise needs an x and a y value. Let's give it our x, but we will multiply it by 0.21f. And then the z, which is essentially the same as the y in this case, if you're doing two dimensions, times 0.21f. And finish that off with the z value of the position being the z value that we're looping around. Now, uh, while we're just in here, take note of what you've multiplied your x and your z by because when we get to the ECS system, we're going to produce exactly the same landscape. And of course, you don't need it, but these values here you can actually play around with and you will get a different looking landscape. You can also, if you're interested, multiply it up to make it higher. So if you want it to be like twice as high, you could just put multiply by 2 here. Now, we're not going to for now because we're going to drive the warthog around on the surface and because of the warthog's colliders, it will get stuck if you've got two higher cubes. But that, again, is something for you to have a little play with. Now, the instance of the cube that we just created, we're going to set its position. So instance dot transform dot position equals the pos we created. Great. Easy. Right, so save that code, switch back to Unity, drag and drop it onto your spawner in the hierarchy. And then if you just click on it, you'll see you've got a space for the cube, rows and columns. Let's create our cube prefab. So right click and we will create a 3D object cube. We're going to leave it as it is. We want it to be one by one by one because we're looping through x and z using one each time. So you want them to be next to each other. Okay, so that cube, drag and drop it into the assets which will make it into a prefab and then go to your hierarchy and delete the cube that's there. Now click on your spawner again Grab the cube prefab and drop that in to the cube. Then we want to set the number of rows and columns. Now, here is where you do not want to go absolutely crazy because it's got to generate all of these game objects. So let's start with just a little world that is 10 by 10. Okay, press play. Actually, Good practice while we're mucking around with filling up memory like this is to actually make sure that you save everything. So save the scene and save the project because you don't want to crash everything and lose it. Okay, let's press play and we will get a little landscape. A little, I mean little, it's only 10 by 10 and then you can see it right there. So let me just move out a bit in the scene. Okay, and then we'll stop playing. We're going to set the main camera up so that it's looking at the scene like it was over here so we can see it a bit better when it runs. So go um, select the main camera, go game object and align with view. Now they're kind of looking in the same place. All right, so click your spawner. Let's try 100 by 100. Now, 
it has to generate all of these so it's going to take a little time Oh, not too much time. That was pretty good. You can see all of these cubes as game objects sitting in the hierarchy. And then if we zoom out, zoom out. Okay, so we now have 100 by 100 cubes with Pearl and Noise as the terrain, which is quite nice. Now, it's even more fun if you can drive the warthog around on the surface and actually check it out from, I guess, like a, a third person kind of view. So we'll add that in. So we'll just stop playing now. In the hierarchy, right click, create another empty, and we will call this our spawn warthog. It doesn't matter what you call it. But that's what I'm calling it. Now, down in assets, we will right click. We will create a new C sharp script and you can call that whatever. Let's call it spawn car just to be different. Open that script up. And the script is going to, first of all, take into it the car prefab. In this case, it will be the warthog. So public game object car. And we also are going to grab hold of the camera for reasons we'll talk about in a second. So object camera. Okay, so there's our camera and there's our car. What we're going to do inside of the update is to test if the user has pressed the space bar. And if they have, it will then instantiate the um, warthog for you because the environment has to build first so there's no use the car being spawned right at the beginning until it has something to sort of live on okay so we're going to go if and we'll use input dot get key down and we will grab hold of the space bar so key code dot space when that is pressed down we're going to create the warthog and we'll put it at a certain position. So let's calculate the position here. So vector three, pause is going to equal new vector three. We want to put it somewhere inside and above the environment itself. We know that the very first cube that's going to be generated will be at an X and a Z value of zero, zero, because that's where our for loops are starting to count from. So if we put our car at say 10, and then at a certain height let's say 10 again because I don't think the environment actually gets up that high and then 10 also for the Z it's going to put it sort of diagonally in and up from that uh, zero zero corner of the landscape making sure that the car is actually above the landscape for us so our uh, game object C the car is going to be instantiated so we'll instantiate the car we're going to put it at the position we just created. So pause and quaternion.identity. We're not actually applying any special rotations to it. Then we're going to grab hold of the camera and do something with it. So it'll be camera.getComponent. And what we're going to do is get some script off of the camera that's going to be called smooth follow. And that will then allow the camera to follow your car. And the dot target of that particular script, we want to set that to equal the car we just created. So C tra dot transform. All right, good. So save that. And now we're going to go back to Unity. What we need to do is get our smooth follow and attach it to our camera. So the smooth follow script is in your warthog folder. So if you just click on that, you'll find it sitting at the top level. Drag and drop that onto the camera. And if you select the camera, just to check that it's attached, you'll see that it has a target and that's going to be set by our warthog script. Now there's also a distance and a height and dampening rotation dampening and height dampening as well for the camera. Now they're set to zero by default. I want you to just lift those up to two so that you can get a better view 
of the car in this instance. All right, so now select your spawn warthog object and we're going to go back to assets and grab our spawn car code, drag and drop that on. Now we need the camera. So the camera is from the camera in your scene, so from the hierarchy, and we need the car, which is the prefab of the car. Again, that's in the Warthog folder, and we want to grab the pink version of the Warthog, not the model of the Warthog. So grab that Warthog, drag and drop that into car, because if you have a look at this prefab, you'll see that it has a whole bunch of uh, code that makes the thing work. Right, so let's now press play. Our landscape will get generated. And now if we hit the space bar, our car will get generated and we can drive it around. If you're lucky, it might actually get a bit stuck because of its colliders. But if you get up enough speed, you should be able to get across, across the surface and investigate the little pearl and landscape that you have created. So that's just a little bit of extra fun for this. So now that you've got that warthog, we can use it again when we create the ECS based system. Right, so I'm gonna leave that lecture here. When we come back, we will have a look at the memory that this is taking up and then we'll build our ECS system and compare it. Thanks for watching. Please support the development of more superb online learning content by subscribing. And as always, visit holistic3d.com to learn more about awesome games development books and tutorials.